Hey guys and welcome to Slasher X Games. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can do sound distance. So it's basically the distance the player is away from a sound depends on what the player hears. So if the object is really far away it's going to be quite soft and when the object is really close it's going to be quite loud. Now there are pretty much two ways to do this. There's going to be a basic way which I'm going to be showing you now. And to do so we're going to be using math, the distance away from the object the player is and just altering the the gain of the sound that is being played and the more complex version is by using 3d sounds now 3d sounds we're going to be touching on in the next video this is going to be basic one but the other one's going to be following on from this one and you can choose whichever concept you feel comfortable with implementing so I have this ear on a stick that's going to be pretty much our player and we've got this invisible man that's creating footsteps he's moving up and down and with each footstep it's going to be creating a sound. And depending on his distance away from our ear on the stick, it's going to be changing or well, adjusting the volume or the gain of that sound of the footstep. So let's jump straight into the code. It's actually really simple to do the basic version. If we open up our sprites, you can see we only got a footstep, which contains two sub-images, just a left and a right foot. And here we've got the ear on the stick. All right, I've got the center down over here, so it kind of looks cool when it rotates towards the source. Then I've got some sounds there, just footsteps randomly that I found on the internet. They're nothing special. Um, they're stereo in nature, 44, 100 sample rate, 192 kilobits per second bit rate. And they are compressed. Okay, cool. Then object, we've got the source. So that's going to be the source of the action. This is going to be the invisible man creating the footsteps. Then here I have the footsteps themselves and our object is. So let's run through the code that's currently here in the create event. I've got speed and direction. It's basically giving this invisible man some sense of purpose, where he's going, how he moves to a point, then turns around and comes back. Uh, the alarm zero is going to be the time between um, the creation of the footsteps to make it look all lifelike. This variable left is just basically saying, is it a left or a right footstep you've got to create? And the alarm one is pretty much, I think it's 10 seconds that it counts down and when it gets to zero it's just going to turn around he's going to be walking back so he's going to be walking towards his destination 10 seconds he turns around and walks back to where he started and then so on and that keeps repeating we can actually jump right into those alarms right over here so i'm just creating some temporary variables that we can work with creating a footstep depending on if it's a left or a right then we've got the image index and the speed and the angle and then yy is just if it's a little higher than the other one so it kind of looks spaced apart and then we've got the direction as well as resetting the left and telling it to call this alarm again in six tenths of a second. So let's go to a alarm one. There we go, just changes the direction and then tells it that 10 seconds later do this again. All right, so the footstep, this is where pretty much most of the action is gonna happen. It's got a step event that just controls its fade. So it kind of looks cool, you know, the step is only there for a while, fades out and such. And then obviously we've got our object ear over here with a step event that follows the mouse and points towards the source. And this one, I think, just draws itself. Very good. And then our room is just blank. We have our source over there, and the ear is just over there at the bottom. Okay, so first things first, we need some sort of variable that we can access from any instance that's creating noise to set up how loud things should be. So I'm gonna call it global gain. So let's go into our source, into the create event, and let's say global.gain equals zero. Okay, initialize it to zero. Next, let's create a sound. So that's gonna be the footstep. Let's go into object footstep. Let's have a create event over here. So every time an instance of this object is created. So I'm gonna say var r equals i random seven. So it's gonna give me an integer between zero and seven because I've got eight sounds over here. And once I've got that, we can create a variable called sound and tell it that it is gonna be the audio play sound and here we've got the sound id well that's going to be r the priority let's make it 100 and it's not going to loop so that's false so when it finishes playing that's it very good stuff so now that's going to be playing pretty much at 100 percent volume and we're going to be manipulating that volume using our global gain variable so let's jump into the math let's go to object here in the step event let's say well um just work out our distance our distance is the distance to object and the object is the object source and once we've got that distance let's come up with some sort of 
algorithm that gives us a value between 0 and 1, because our global gain is going to be between 0 and 1. When it comes to sounds, 0 is off, 1 is on. Anything in between, 0 0.5 is going to be 50%. So global.gain is going to equal, and I'm going to come up with something random that will kind of work. Let's say 100 divided by distance. Okay, and just to make sure things don't get over 1, let's say, well, if global.gain is greater than 1, then global.gain equals 1. And in that sense, it'll always be between 0 and 1. Great stuff. So to visualize this global.gain variable, let's actually draw it to the screen. So let's copy global.gain. Let's go to our ears draw event. And below draw self, let's say draw text. Um, X, Y, plus 50, let's put it just below. Let's say string global again, fantastic. Just like that. Okay. And let's say okay to that. So now we're updating the value of global dot gain with a value between zero and one. Now that we have that value, we can go into object footstep and we can change the gain of the sound of this variable called sound right over here, which we can access from anywhere in our object. So let's go to the step right below this after it's checked its image alpha. I'm going to use a function called audio sound gain and we want to manipulate the gain of the sound variable which we created in the create event next volume well this is easy it's going to be global.gain and the time so you can tell it to change its gain over a certain amount of time I want it to be one so it's instantaneous but you can put any number there a greater number here obviously will mean that the gain will increase over a greater period of time a smaller number would be more instantaneous so believe it or not that's all we need to do to manipulate the gain of an object making sound. So let's test this out and see what happens. Alright, so we're here at the bottom, 0 0.28. Okay, so the footsteps are going to the right now. 0 0.16, that's the furthest it's been away. 5, 26, 27, 28, 28. So 0.28 is the loudest it's going to get from here. So let's move slowly towards the footsteps. 25, 30, 40%, 50%. You hear that? It's quite loud. There, it's 100%. Go further away. Gets all quiet, super quiet, because we're now further away from the source. Get up close. Super loud. Check that out, guys. So that's pretty much how you can add basic sounds to your game that are sensitive to the distance the player is away from them. Pretty fantastic stuff. So I hope you found this video educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe for more. And if you would like to see the more advanced version where we use 3D sounds, check out the next tutorial that will be following this one shortly. Please feel free to follow me on various social networks, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, things like that. You can check out my Facebook page, links in the description, project files for this tutorial, also in the descriptions free of charge. And if you like what I'm doing here, please give my Patreon campaign a look. I do appreciate your support greatly. If you have any suggestions for other cool tutorials that are slightly out of the box like this one, also drop them in the comments below or send me a PM. This concept itself was a suggestion from a subscriber. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.